Well, good evening. Welcome to the uh, December edition of Sky Views, brought to you by the New Jersey State Museum Planetarium. I'm Bill Murray, Planetarium Technician at the Planetarium. Let's take a look at some interesting sights visible in our chilly December skies this year. We have a bright parade of the moon and planets this month. Uh, the first event occurs early in the month, uh, on the evening of December 1st. Uh, shown here, we're looking towards the west, uh, about 11 p.m. on the evening of December 1st, and we can see a bright conjunction of the moon and the planet Jupiter. Conjunctions are close passes of one celestial object to another. And this evening, uh, the gibbous moon, which is the phase of the moon in between first quarter, when the moon looks half full in our evening skies, and full moon when it's completely bright and round, passes about two and a half degrees south of the bright planet Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system and has been gracing our fall skies uh, for the last few months. Uh, and this evening, uh, it has a meetup with the moon. So uh, if you have clear skies on December 1st, uh, get out and take a look towards the west. And as the evening progresses, you will see the moon move closer and closer to the planet Jupiter, being closest to about 11 p.m. And binoculars will give you a much better view than just your unaided eye. However, the most spectacular conjunction of the month occurs six days later, on the evening of December 7th. Shown here in our sky view, we're looking towards the eastern part of our sky, and you can see the winter constellations are beginning to rise, uh, specifically the bright constellation of Taurus the Bull. And located inside that constellation are the full moon, Tonight is the night of the full moon. The moon is full at exactly 11.07 p.m. Native Americans knew the full moon in December as the full cold moon because of the increasing cold temperatures that begin to occur at this time of year. But located just below the moon is another bright object, and that is the planet Mars. This view is shown just after sunset, so looking towards the east as they both rise. You'll notice that Mars and the moon are very close together, uh, but they will get closer as the evening progresses. By about 11 p.m. Uh, this evening, uh, the moon and Mars will have moved to a position where they're almost virtually overhead about an altitude of 71 degrees. So you can see them by looking almost completely straight up. And you will see Mars has moved very, very close to the moon. Uh, if you're not using any optical aids, it might appear that Mars is just uh, on the bottom of the moon touching. Uh, this is a very, very close conjunction, which is made special not only because tonight is the night of the full moon, but tonight is also the night of the opposition of Mars. So let's take a minute and talk about what that means. Mars is actually a planet that is difficult to get a good view of. Uh, as is shown in our graphic here, uh, since Mars is a superior planet, which means its orbit is further out from the Sun than the Earth's orbit is, uh, for most of its orbit, uh, Mars is very far away from us, shown in the right side of the graphic here. Uh, and during that time, Mars is very faint and dim and difficult to view at all. But about once every two years or so, uh, as is shown in the left side of our graphic, Mars has a close approach to the Earth called an opposition. And at that time, Mars is at its closest to us here. Um, this evening, it is about 38 million miles away from the Earth. And uh, at that time, we get an excellent view of Mars. And the opposition of Mars is this evening. Mars is actually in opposition at 12.38 a.m. on the morning of the 8th, about two, after, two hours after we've shown our graphic here in sky views. And so both the Moon and the Mars will give us very good views this evening. So shown in this graphic are uh, pictures of Mars as it would appear through a small telescope. Uh, 
from starting in mid-October, uh, when Mars is now moving towards us, uh, over the next few months, Mars will appear to be larger and brighter. It's at its largest and brightest on the morning of December 8th. And after that, as Mars moves away, it will begin to shrink and grow dimmer over the next coming months. So the best time to view Mars is these early weeks in December. Mars and the Moon will be closest about 11 p.m. on the evening of the 7th. Shown here is a view through a small telescope using an eyepiece with roughly 150 power to show both Mars as a planet and the surface of the moon. Uh, so Mars will be about five Mars diameters, which is about one arc minute south of the moon, south pole. And uh, you'll be able to see detail both on Mars and the moon at the same time. Even though a close conjunction of Mars and the Moon, like we're getting this evening, is a rare event, uh, we're a little bit lucky, unlucky here in New Jersey in that most of the rest of the United States will get to see an even rarer event, which is an occultation of Mars, where the Moon actually moves in front of the planet and covers it for a certain period of time. Uh, but we do get to see a close conjunction so even though uh, Mars is at its closest, it's still much smaller than the Moon, uh, but the Moon will not be in position to uh, cover the planet, uh, so you'll get to see Mars during the entire phase of the close conjunction that we get this evening. So if you get a chance, uh, and the weather is clear on the evening of December 7th, and if you have binoculars or a small telescope, uh, both would be excellent to view this event. Uh, get out and take a look straight up and see the uh, close conjunction of Mars and the Moon. The third and last of our planetary conjunctions with the Moon is probably the most difficult of the three to see. Uh, here we're looking very low in the southwest on the evening of December 24th, Christmas Eve. Uh, it is about 5.30, so about 40 minutes or so after sunset. And if you can get out and you have a very, very good low southwestern horizon, you'll be able to see an interesting triangle made up of the planet Venus, the moon as a very, very small crescent, and above them and midway in between them, the planet Mercury. You will definitely need binoculars to be able to see all three. Uh, Venus should be visible to the unaided eye, which will allow you to find the area of the sky to look at. And once you find the planet Venus, you can use binoculars and see if you can pick out the very small crescent moon and the planet Mercury above them. Uh, this scene will only be around for a few minutes. By about a half hour later, about 6 p.m., all three of them should have been set. So if the weather is uh, clear on Christmas Eve and you have a good low southwestern horizon and a pair of binoculars, you can get out and try to find the triangle of the planet Venus, the planet Mercury, and the crescent moon. At this time of year, the winter constellations with all their bright stars begin to rise on our eastern horizon just after sunset. So shown here are some of the early rising winter constellations. And the one that I would like to concentrate on today is uh, one of the earliest to rise, and that is the constellation of Auriga, the charioteer. In mythology, uh, Auriga represents the legendary king Erichthonius, one of the first kings of Athens and the first person to tame horses and uh, harness them onto a chariot, uh, a feat for which he was made a constellation by the Greek gods. Uh, but for some reason in the constellation representation, Erichthonius is not saddled with horses, but with goats. Um, the bright star Capella, brightest star in the constellation, and the sixth brightest star in the sky, uh, translates as the she-goat and several other bright stars in a uh, triangle just below Capella are the Haidi, which means the kids. Um, so nobody really knows the reason why uh, Auriga is saddled with goats and not horses, 
Um, that is a mystery launched, lost to uh, us from ancient times. However, in the far eastern part of the constellation is one of the brightest and best open clusters visible in the night sky, Messier 37. M37 is a very bright and rich open cluster containing about 150 stars down to 12th magnitude. Uh, one of the uh, finds of the French comet hunter Charles Messier as he was searching for comets and occasionally stumbled, stumbled over bright deep sky objects. Um, open clusters are one of the phases of star evolution. Uh, stars are born out of clouds of nebulous gas and eventually so many stars are born in those nebulas that their radiation disperses all of the remaining gas in the nebula and you're left with a cluster of several hundred to several thousand very young stars as is shown here in M37. If you have a small telescope or even a pair of binoculars, uh, M50, M37 is a uh, bright and very easily visible uh, object in the winter sky that you should view. Well, that's it for our December edition of Sky Views here at the New Jersey State Museum Planetarium. Uh, hopefully uh, your skies will be clear and uh, your weather will be not quite as cold as it usually is this time of year. So from all of us here at the New Jersey State Museum Planetarium, stay warm in your stargazing in the new year.